previously on Finding Blue Haven. What do you think, Ross? I say repaint it now. Oh. Or do another cut. Oh. Got to paint one more time. Whoa. Guess what we're doing tonight? Sanding. So, yep, we decided to go for a fourth coat. It took a whole bunch of discussion and a little persuasion for us all to be in agreement. We didn't really want to go through all that work again, but we decided she will look so much better if we can do another coat that doesn't have any stripes. So, scuffing once again. We spared you from having to watch all this in the last video we released. This is what we had to go through between every single coat we put on. Since we couldn't paint within the recoating window, which was no less than 16 hours, but no more than 24 hours, we had to rescuff it between every single coat. And this is what we did. And this is why we were so, so sick of scuffing by the time we got to this fourth coat. But we decided it was going to be worth it. She's going to look even better. Since our boot stripe was already painted, we decided to protect it for this final coat of blue. We went along the top of it with fine line tape, and then we went along that with a blue masking tape that's wide enough to hang straight, not following the whole curve. If any blue round down on it, it would drip straight down and miss the boot stripe. We also had a little extra help for this last coat to make it look even better. And that was... Mr. Scott! The Obi-Wan of Marine Painting! If you haven't checked out his channel yet, Scott in the World as I See It, you should. We had Mr. Scott come to give us some pointers because we ended up painting most of this when it was borderline too hot. Remember, we only had weekends and had to work around rain. Our professional said painting in this heat was like rolling and tipping on hard mode. Since we only had the weekends, it took us months to get all the blue on Stratego. Well into September, we still had the starboard side left to finish for the blue. We were getting worried about running out of our weather window to paint the rest as the days were getting noticeably shorter and cooler. We wanted to get at least one full coat on the entire boat, meaning we still had the top side and the bottom. After talking about it, we decided we needed some outside help or we'd run out of time. So we brought in some extra firepower, the dynamic duo. They came in and knocked out the bottom for us, freeing us to work on the top side. They started with a full coat of primer and then we were ready for the anti-fouling layers. We got our red bottom paint. Pettit Trinidad Pro. Ooh, look at that color! First coat of anti-fouling paint underway. The purpose of anti-fouling paint is to keep things from growing on it. Since the hole's constantly in the water, there's lots of different things that can attach and grow on it uninhibited. We call them hard and soft growth, and some classic examples are barnacles and slime. If someone says their prop is fouled up, that's what they mean. As growth builds up, it actually creates more drag, slowing the boat. Regardless of what's trying to grow though, none of it's welcome. And this is where anti-fouling paint steps in to save the day. It comes in and performs a double duty of protecting the hole and deterring any hard or soft growth from deciding it would be a great place to call home. There are two main types of anti-fouling paint, hard and ablative, also known as soft, and two main ways they deter growth, cuprous oxide and biocides. There are also anti-fouling paints that are a hybrid of hard and soft and some that have both copper and biocides. For Stratego, we chose a red hard bottom paint for the first layer and a black ablative paint for the final layers. At least for a while, she'll most likely be sitting at dock for the most part, but we really don't know when we'll have her ready to go back in the water. In general, hard paint can't be left exposed to air for long periods of time, so we decided to go with an ablative over the hard. In the middle of this, Bird dropped in to visit and we were like, look, he matches our boat! Since the ablative wears away, it's a good idea to use a different color underneath as a visual aid. If the red starts showing, it's definitely time to recoat. 
Once all that was done, it was time to paint the spots under the jack stands. They brought the travel lift in to lift Stratego up enough to move the jack stands and the blocks she's sitting on. The last time she was on the lift, she only had a coat of primer and we were moving her to this boatyard. Now, a year later, we're finishing her bottom paint! After the lift was in place, they lowered the straps and connected the slings. Since she's freshly painted, even though everything is dry, they slipped some foam on the straps for some extra protection. It's amazing what actually holds and lifts these boats up. Once the pins were in and she was ready, they slowly retracted the slings, removing the slack and making sure the foam was in place. After she was up off the blocks, they quickly got to work. Stratego was sitting on four sets of blocks and eight jack stands. Each jack stand is attached to a chain running under the keel and attached to a jack stand on the other side. Our girl sits on four pairs of jack stands. Each jack stand has a layer of wax paper between the wood of the jack stand and Stratego's beautiful paint. Once all that was done and the jack stands were chained together, the operator grabbed the control box and rolled the lift off to the next waiting boat. We have eight spots from the jack stands on the sides of the hull, four block areas on the bottom of the keel, and also the four areas where the chains ran under the keel left to paint. A total of 16 areas we need to finish, but we're getting close. We're very thankful too because the weather's getting a lot cooler. Since the areas under the jack stands haven't been touched yet, we're basically starting back at the beginning. First with more sanding, of course! What's a little more at this point? Also, since the black ablative slowly wears away over time, we need to make sure we don't paint any of the primer or red paint on it. We don't want those to wear away too. Hopefully this paint job lasts for quite a while. What do you think is open? I don't know, I'm blinded by the light at the moment. <laughs> Dude, I see spots. <laughs> it's like a balmy 45 degrees out here. It's cold. You guys are laying on some cold, damp ground. But hey, we're getting our boat in. Dude, every time. <laughs> what do you think about this, Ross? It's just amazing. Been work on this 50 foot sailboat. Yes. Right? There is nothing better working on these boats. I just love it. I Is recommend it. it. I highly recommend it. Oh, it's easy. Reality isn't always quite so easy, though. We were still so sick of sanding, so Ross and I were counting down the areas for Mike. We accidentally lost count at some point, though, and he had one more left when he thought he was on the last one. Oops! We all live, though, and it's done now. Anti-fouling paint is usually just called hard bottom paint or ablative bottom paint. The hard version is exactly what it sounds like. If you run your hand over it, it feels like regular paint. It works by discouraging or deterring growth from the cuprous oxide content, which is usually just referred to as the copper content. Depending on the paint, it can range from around 17 to 65 percent copper. The higher the percentage of copper, the less welcoming it is to growth. A bladed bottom paint also has the same differing levels of copper, but it wears off with boat movement. If you run your hand over it, some of it will come off on your hand. As the boat moves through the water, it slowly wears away or sloughs off, taking any growth with it. A lot of people do what they call scum runs. Take the boat out into some open water and open up the throttle. Some people hire a diver to come scrape or clean off anything trying to grow or stick to it as well. Bottom paints without cuprous oxide use biocides to discourage growth. Biocide paints can be used on any boat, but anti-fouling paints with cuprous oxide cannot be used on aluminum boats. The copper and aluminum react and can cause corrosion. Some anti-fouling paints use copper thiocyanate, a less reactive form of copper that can be used on aluminum boats. And of course, there are hybrid combinations of all of those. A lot of bottom paints are single season and have to be reapplied every year. But there are also multi-season paints for those who can't or don't want to haul out their boat every year to repaint, like us! The red hard paint we chose, Pettit Trinidad Pro, has one of the highest levels of cuprous oxide at 65%. The black ablative paint is Pettit's Hydro Coat and just over 40% cuprous oxide. Both are multi-seasonal and we're hoping they work really well for several seasons. Hey guys, check this out. You can see the difference here between the ablative paint and the top paint, the all grid. Check this ablative paint out. See how it's brittle and it cracks.
crumbles like this. That's the black paint that's on the boat there, on the bottom. But now check out the all grip paint, the top paint, uh, that blue, the stars and stripes blue. And look at this, look at this film. This is like a plastic film. That is the paint that we peeled off of here. See that? This is really something. I'm very impressed with this all grip paint. All grip, the best. What do you got there? This is some of the all grip, the stars and stripes blue. As you already showed how the ablative just comes apart and the stars and stripes is like plastic, but here is a big chunk that we had left. It is like, it feels like soft rubber, like literally. It's like squishy, you can bend it. Feels pretty cool. And there's a stir stick stuck out the, the side of it. There is. Wow. It dried like that and it's pretty happy in there. Hmm. What could you use that for? Like a golf club now, like a putter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The trash. I think it was meant for the trash. Guys, we made it to the final bit of blue. We just have the starboard side, bath, brit, and stern, and the hole will be done. I cannot begin to tell you how exciting this is. We started off the same as the other side with a fine line tape and the wider blue masking tape. Not only is the boot stripe done this time, but the bottom is too. We want to be extra careful. As always, our professional showed up for the home stretch. He was amazing and we would not have ever been able to paint Stratego without him. A huge thank you to him. Once the starboard side and stern were done, we mixed up a little more paint and Mike put the final coat on the bath sprit. You may have noticed that it looks like we pretty much wear the same clothes for all of this. We picked out some dedicated painting clothes and it's too bad we didn't show you what they look like before and after. By the time the boat was done, you could definitely tell what colors we chose to paint her. Since the bottom's already done and we need to put another coat on the bootstrap, we're putting this fine line tape on here. As close as we can get it, pushing it down really hard and then to try to avoid some runs, Ross has gone back and put some blue tape on top of that. So hopefully if anything does run, it will hit that blue tape and drip stick down and start like getting on our beautiful bike. Precision, precision, but it worked! We got our third and final coat on the boot stripe. We were actually going to do four coats, but we ran out of our weather window and decided three is enough. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see us continue our painting journey on the top side, then hit the bell icon to be notified of when our next video comes out.